Well, hello, Madcappers. Welcome back to Hat School, Summer Hat School, the best hat school because Summer Hat School is about summer hats. And we love this hat. This is the wide brim version of our bucket hat. So let me introduce you to the wide brim. It gives you plenty of coverage, but can be turned up at the front so little eyes can see where they're going. It can be turned up at the side like a cowboy hat. It uses the same top and band as our regular bucket hat. And in fact, both brims come in the bucket hat pattern set. So you've got elastic in the lining just to add to the comfort. We use a shoelace for our chin strap. And you can find shoelaces just about anywhere. These pretty ones in color. I've got a link for them in the description below. Now the pattern sets on our website, we have separated them into the sizes now. So it's easier to use. You can print them in black and white and you've just got one size on your set. On Etsy, unfortunately, we still have to do some crossing over because we are restricted on Etsy to five files per pattern. Whereas on our website, it's unlimited. And I like to tape on the back too, just makes the pieces sturdy and we are using lightweight quilting fabrics so easy to find and so abundant in beautiful prints you can add a bow to the hat which is coming up in a, in a video soon on the channel there'll be a link above when that video is out and this is the adult version of the hat also coming up soon so you can do a mother daughter hat set it's almost the same hat they're just different sizes but look at how pretty they are with bows it's a perfect hat for all your summer needs. You can use it for a wedding with a bow or put a chin strap on your own for your boat. Anyway, let's get to the ingredients, which is fusible interfacing, heavyweight interfacing stabilizer, a shoelace for our cord, one eighth of an inch wide elastic or three millimeter wide elastic. And there's our package of shoelaces. It's in the description below. First of all, we're gonna press our fabric, our cotton fabric, just to help give it another shrinking. And I like to layer all the pieces I'm gonna use for my brim. So when I cut them, all the little notches will match. And I'm just tracing the outline of my brim onto my fabric layers. And that piece in the center is gonna be perfect for our top pieces. So not a lot of waste here, folks. I'll just take this piece of heavyweight stabilizer out. I won't need it for my top and I'll just set it aside for another project. And you'll see our hat top is in two pieces and it fits perfectly in that off cut. You can see there's four layers and I'll just put them aside to do after and there's five layers for our brim. So I'll start by fusing that first piece of interfacing to the back of the top of the brim and turn it over and fuse the other piece of interfacing to the underside of the brim. And I had a piece of sew-in interfacing that was sandwiched in the middle and I'll just give it another good pressing. And I'm just gonna clip that piece of sew-in interfacing to one of the sides and usually it's the top side. And I'll use my handy sewing clips. There's a link for them in the description below. And I'll just clip in a few places, but I'm going to do an edge stitch all the way around all the edges of my brim with the sew-in interfacing layer on the top. And I'll just go around and sew those two pieces together so that my top brim piece now will be made up of one piece of beautiful quilting weight fabric on the outside, a nice lightweight fusible interfacing right underneath that, and then the sew-in interfacing on top of that, which will be the monkey in the middle for the sew-in interfacing because when it's all put together, that sew-in piece will be in the center of the inside of my brim. And I'm just gonna mark about seven centimeters or three inches down from each end because I'm just gonna sew all those layers together, but I'm gonna start at one point that I just marked with my marker and end at the other. And I will show you why in a minute. And we'll move over to the sewing machine to start sewing our brim together. And I'm using my regular seam width of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And my handy magnet guide does the heavy lifting here, keeping me right in place where I want to sew. And I'm going to go around from that one mark to the other, stopping right there. And now I'm going to sew the ends together, right sides together. So the piece that has the three layers is going to be sewn together at the back. This is our back seam of our brim. 
and I'll just move my clip far enough down so I can leave them in place as I sew those together with my regular seam width. And when I'm finished doing that, I will clip the other two ends together, the ends that are going to be on the underside of my brim, right sides together, and sew their back seam up. And I find that this way of sewing the brim makes a really nice clean line all around that outer edge. So I'll sew the other side of my brim back seam right sides together with my average, my usual seam width of 3 eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And then now I'm going to finish closing that outer edge of my brim. Now while I have you listening, if you have a little one that's very fussy about hats, there's a secret for hats for kids. First of all, if you're going to make them a hat like this, maybe let them pick out the fabric. They'll be more likely to wear the hat if they are the ones that chose the fabric that's going to go on their head. We'll finish closing that outside edge with the back seams opened flat underneath our presser foot as we go over top on the underside and on the top of the brim and now you can go around and clip that outer edge with some scissors to make it a nice clean smooth uh, edge when you turn it right side out or as I do I like to just go around with my serger which I find cleans up that edge nicely and gives it a nice compressed edge for me to use when I'm turning it right side out and I roll that edge with my fingers to bring it right to the center of the outside of my hat brim. And as I go around rolling, I'll just clip to hold it in place. And as you do this, you can figure out how many rows of top stitching you want to finish that edge off with, because that's coming up next. And now I'm just going to go around and top stitch to finish that brim edge, keeping that back seam open and flat underneath. And if you have to pin or clip there, then by all means do that. And you can decide how deep your top stitching is going to be into the brim. I start just shy of the 3 8 of an inch so that I've got all those layers underneath my presser foot for that very first row. And you can continue doing row after row using your presser foot as your guide as you move up along the inside of the brim. You can do one row, this is two rows. And I'll add my madcap label and finish closing that brim by closing that inside edge of the brim and sewing all those layers together. And now using my back seam as one of the folding points, I'll fold it in half to create a notch for my front, my center front. Then I'll bring that center front and that back seam together clip in place and flatten out the sides and create a little clip mark on the inside curve at each of those side folds for my center side and that's going to help me with putting on my chin strap which I will do now and my chin straps a little bit longer than I need so I folded it in half and I'm just going to cut away a little bit of the extra and I'll put one end of my cut edge on one notch on the inside or the underside of my brim and let me just rave once again about shoelaces for chin straps these ones are flat and comfortable and I haven't had any of the little ones complain so far yay and no complaints means they'll wear their hats, right? And I'm just going to go back and forth, back and forth at the edge of the inside curve of my brim on that notch that I made and just sew the end of the chin strap onto the underside of the brim. And now I will repeat on the other side, sewing back and forth, back and forth several times. That chin strap is not going anywhere. And so it'll look like this and I've made a couple of these so you'll see me going back and forth with the hats. And 
And back to those off cuts from the center of our brim. When we cut out, we're going to get our top ready now. But first, we're going to just fuse that stabilizer onto the back of each of the piece of cotton. We have two pieces of cotton, one for the outside, one for the lining. Uh, actually, four pieces because each top piece is cut in two sections. And there's a center seam down the middle of each top piece and that center seam has a slight curve to match the slight curve of the top of our heads. So I'm just going to put the top pieces right sides together, give them a little clip out of the way of where I'm going to sew. And now I'm going to prepare the band piece as well. The band is three layers, so two layers of our beautiful cotton fabric and one layer of the heavyweight sewing interfacing which I will sew on to the back of the piece that I decide will be my outside band piece. And that's this one. And that piece will be the lining and I'm using six and a half inches of elastic for my lining or 16 and a half centimeters. And I'm using one eighth of an inch wide elastic or three millimeter wide elastic. And those little notches that I've cut in the band, I'm using to place the elastic once I get to the lining stage. But right now I'm going to sew my center top seams together, right sides together. And I'm using my normal or my regular seam width of three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. And my magnet guide once again, and once I have those seams done, I'm going to do one with a double row of top stitching, opening up the raw edge of the seam underneath, working from the top and pulling it out on each side as I go and doing a neat double row of top stitching up one side, pivot at that end, come back down on the other side of the seam. And I try to pick a thread color that sort of matches the main color in my hat. And I'm just using a neutral beige color thread right now. And it's blending in nicely. And on my lining piece, I'm just gonna sew one row of top stitching, just so that the raw edges of that seam underneath are off to the one side, off to the right side of my needle. And that helps me tell which piece actually is gonna be the lining and the piece with the double top stitching that piece is going to be the outside piece. Clip the two pieces together, wrong sides together, just matching the ends of the seams. And then I'm going to do an edge stitch to sew the two pieces together, wrong sides together, all the way around. And once I've done that, I'm going to just fold the top in half matching the two sewn, the front and the back seams, the two sewn seam ends, which one is the front of the center front of the hat and one is the center back, folding it in half and creating a spot where I can notch on either side for my center side seams. And now I have four points to match when I sew the top onto the top of my hat band. But now we have to finish our hat band. So back to the hat band construction we go. And I'm just gonna do an edge stitch and sew that sew on heavyweight interfacing onto the back of my pretty fabric. And I'm just gonna add a couple of rows of decorative top stitching, about two centimeters up from the bottom or just less than an inch up from the bottom. You can choose where you want to place this sewing. I like to put a row of sewing, at least one row of sewing. You could do a decorative row of sewing if you want, sort of midway up from the bottom of the band just to help hold those pieces together. So I've done a double row of top stitching, which will match the edge if I do a double row of top stitching on my brim. And now I'll finish with an edge stitch around the top of that inside curve of my band. And so the two back edges together, right sides together, the back of my band, the band back seam, again, my regular seam width of three eighths of an inch or one centimeter. 
and I'm going to open up that seam as well and do a double row of top stitching to hold the raw edges of that seam flat, just adding to the comfort at the back of the hat. Up one side of the seam, pivot at the end and come back down the other side, back to the starting point. And voila, that's how it should look. I fold it in half at the back, creating a center front, and I'll cut a notch at the top and the bottom of the band. And now I'm going to match those the center front and the center back together. Create another fold and do a center side at the top of the band on each side, which is going to help me ease in the top when I get to that stage. And just a small clip inside of that uh, edge stitching that I've done. And an edge stitch for me is about um, a quarter of an inch or six millimeters. And now I'm going to sew up the back seam of my lining piece for the band. And I'll just sew it off to one side the way I did the lining of the top, just to flatten that seam and make it comfortable so it's not sticking up against the head. And to keep this hat really simple, I've used the same fabric as my lining as I used on the outside, but you could use cotton broadcloth or poly cotton broadcloth as your lining just as easily. And now we're going to put in the elastic for our lining and we work from the wrong side of the lining. So the elastic is on the inside of the lining piece. And I'm going to use my magnet guide once again to help me place this elastic going up again about two centimeters from the bottom or three quarters of an inch from the bottom. And I start out that one clip and I'll put the end of the elastic in and go back and forth and back and forth to hold it in place. And then I'm going to stretch my elastic over to the other little clip that I made the other little notch in the band bottom and I'm going to pull it and work it in evenly all the way across from one little notch to the other and just evening it out as I come to the end there. You can use those notches to put a cord on the outside band if you'd like to just adjust the size of a cord with a toggle at the back and you'll see that on some of the other videos. And I'm just going to go around the inside curve of my brim now and make a few snips in the raw edge just above that last line of sewing which will help me straighten out the the brim as I ease it into the band and I'm working on the wrong side of the band but the right sides are together and going around hopefully doing a nice consistent 3 8 of an inch or one centimeter wide stitch and it looks good so far. So now it's time to bring the lining into the show. And what we're going to do is we're going to match the bottom edge of the lining on the right side with the bottom edge of the underside of the brim, the side that has our chin strap cord sewn to it. And we're just gonna follow along that seam that we just made previously when we sewed the outside band onto the top layer of our brim, right sides together. And we're working from the back of the outside of the band. We're working actually right up against that layer of heavyweight sew-in interfacing that we sewed onto the back of our band. Now pull the lining and the band out together away from the brim, match up those back seams on the band at the top. That's still a raw open edge. And we're going to close that next. And we're getting ready to add the top. So we close that edge with an edge stitch and now work around the top, matching up those four points, the two side notches and the front and the back. And then you're just going to ease in the rest in between those clips. And just check to make sure that the fit is good and now we're going to sew it all together. Now the right sides are together so we're working on the lining side of the hat, of the hat top. That's what we can see right now under my presser foot. 
And I'm just working slowly and moving those raw edges from the bands and the top very edge seams right out up against the magnet. And I'm using my magnetic seam guide here, which is doing all the heavy lifting folks. Trying to make a very consistent, even seam that's about three eighths of an inch wide or one centimeter. My usual seam width. Take your time, do a neat job, check your work. If everything is good, then finish off that edge with pinking shears, or I just used my serger once again. And now I'm just gonna top stitch that serged edge down so that it rests against the top of the band. I will work from the outside of the hat with that seam underneath. And as I go along, I can feel that it's all off to one side, which would be the right side looking at this video. And I just slowly move the top away from the band top as I go slowly around. And I have a, my special presser foot that does a good job making a consistent seam for me here, but I, I often use just my regular presser foot to do this too and take my time. And as you're sewing this last step, just make sure that your chin strap cord is out of the way and you're not accidentally sewing it to the top of the hat after all this work. And now we're ready to put a toggle on our cords. And what I like about this shoelace, and thank you to customer Anne for suggesting shoelaces, but I really like these plastic caps because you don't need to use a hook or have any tools to get the toggle on. And for the children, once you have that toggle on, I find it's good to cut those plastic ends off and replace them with a knot so the toggle can't be slipped off. So once I finish setting this toggle in place and, and tying my chin strap ends into knots, I'm going to give the brim one final pressing. Now, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'm very quick to answer and I'm here for you. Your success is my success. Now a few final touches, just going around that outside edge with my steam iron. And voila, it looks like we have a hat that's ready to place on a sweet little one's head. And let me tell you folks, I won't hold you in suspense. Introducing the one and only Franny. Hi guys, I'm going to be doing a cartwheel. Yep, she is awesome, just so awesome. Thank you so much to our video producers, our patrons, and our channel member for supporting the channel. You can follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We are Madcap Hats there as well. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and please join us again for the next video where I'll show you how to make this hat in adult sizes. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye.